And for Hofstra, they got to limit paint touches. There's going to be lots of cuts, lots of back screens that Princeton is going to run in their trademark motion offense. You got to keep them out of the paint. You can't. You got to make them settle for contested outside jumpers. Do not let people get front cut and get in the paint. Both head coaches coaching at their alma maters. There's Mitch Henderson, 13th year head coach, part of a big run in 96, upsetting UCLA in the NCAA tournament. And that was Speedy Claxton. One of the program's greatest players at Hofstra, coach of the year a season ago. Hofstra will go from right to left on your TV screens. Princeton in the road blacks, trimmed with orange and white. And it's Yako Fritz and Caden Pierce to take the opening tip. Packed house at the Mac and we're underway. Thanks so much for joining us on MSG Networks and Flow Hoops. Daquan Carlos, top of the key jumper is true. And a good start right away. Well, that is such a big part of what Jaquan Carlos is trying to improve upon. A consistent outside shot right there. Some major drop coverage from Prince, and they're willing to give Carlos that shot. He makes him pay there. Well, the Tigers are not a very big team. That's never really been their style. Usually will play five outside the perimeter, also known as the Princeton offense. And Lee has been a catalyst as their point guard. Catch and shoot three from the wing is off the mark from Blake Peters. He had three triples in their win against Rutgers on Monday night. Dubar inside, Fritz, oh, that was pretty, and one. A great pick and roll action from D-Stone, Dubar, and Yako Fritz. Fritz didn't attempt a shot in the win over St. Joe's Long Island, but he takes a great feed. Dubar puts it in a tight window, and Fritz with a nice physical finish inside for the N1. Yako Fritz, the transfer from Canisius after playing 99 games up in Buffalo including last season with his little brother, Yori. Good addition to this lineup, a native of the Netherlands. And he misses the end one, but a 4 nothing lead for the Pride here, and so far two possessions on the offensive end, Will, and they've looked good. Yeah, they have looked very good so far, specifically on the offensive end, but it's early, and Princeton will not go down easily ever. And that's Caden Pierce who took the shot, and will get Fritz here on the foul. Of course, Fritz is first team's first. Caden Pierce, exceptional player a season ago, averaged eight points, seven rebounds, third inside the Ivy in rebounding, and he's just a bull on the glass. He sure is, and he gave Rutgers, which is usually a, a very physical team, I mean, he, Caden Pierce gave them fits, crashing the offensive glass, had 15 rebounds in that win, six on the offensive glass, so Hofstra's going to have to do a job, find, good job finding him and keeping him off of the offensive glass. Goes one for two, and that's the guy they'll probably get the ball in their hands as much as they can, trying to avoid Matalaka and others. Carlos looking for Thomas, and that's who has it. And he's got the matchup with the Laco. Two premier stars for both teams, and they're going to get Tyler Thomas on a carry. I don't see it called very often, uh, but Tyler Thomas clearly does not agree with the call. You don't very seldom see it. At least I didn't see it live, but uh, but nonetheless, Thomas called for the carry and the turnover. Our three officials tonight, Tim Kelly, Sean Hull, and Adam Vanderberg. Here's Alaco. 21 points in the last game. Second team, all Ivy a season ago. Lee. Wide open, Pierce straight away, it's true. And that was going to be the scouting report coming in. They want that guy to shoot the ball more than the others for Hofstra, but he can make you pay. And it's not that Caden Pierce can't shoot at all, a 33% shooter from deep last year, but uh, but he, he, they're, compared to the other shooters on the floor for Princeton, uh, they'll let Pierce shoot, and if he knocks it down, it's going to be a good night for them. Here's Peters for three, it's good. A seven run and the Tigers have taken the lead and that was excellent defense that's just a better shot by Blake Peters who showed not only in the season opener but in the NCAA tournament specifically against Missouri had a huge game to lead the Tigers to the Sweet 16. He yeah, averaged 18 minutes during the NCAA tournament and about 12 points during that run as Carlos for three rattles out and another rebound from Pierce. Pierce against Fritz. You don't see them post up very often. Tries a little cut by Peters, but hand in the lane by Bryce Washington. Replays are brought to you by the Lantec Group. 
Well, right here, this is just Blake Peters trailing the play in transition. Washington gets a hand up in his face, but he's such a good shooter, it didn't doesn't matter, and he buries it to put Princeton in front. 12 on the timer, Peters again. And now Lee on the perimeter. Gets past Carlos, Fritz was there, that allows Pierce a straightaway three. That's off the mark, but an offensive rebound by Martini. This team offensive rebounds so well, that is one of their strengths. But Carlos there on the defensive end, goes to the Hofstra bench, and it's pride ball. A good job by Jaquan Carlos there, playing defense after the offensive rebound, but that's Zach Martini is just one of the guys who can hurt you on the offensive glass. All of these guys are going to look to crash the glass. Thomas getting double teamed as he looks inside for Fritz. Well, Tyler Thomas at 16 and a half per game last season. It was a leading scorer many times for Hofter a year ago and of course a lot of praise as well and well deserved but you know Will he's going to be getting a lot of double teams this year with Aaron Estrada now at Alabama. He is and you see on that first possession Princeton blitzing the ball screens. Fritz sets the screen, Carlos buries the bucket and the Pride are back on the board. Well Carlos, is, his jump shot through the first two games is looking confident, it's looking crisp uh, and that is a big, big storyline for this Hofstra offense. If they're going to drop that far off, and Carlos can consistently knock down that jumper. Pierce picks up his dribble, handoff Lee in the paint, finds Pierce again, who slides to the left wing. No good as Washington and Carlos come together, but here comes D. Stone Dubar. Dubar can really be the X factor this season. If the Hofstra Pride want to win a CAA championship. Thomas inside with two hands. What a move by Tyler Thomas. They're playing the jump shot. So he gets a little hezzy to the left and a jam from Tyler Thomas. Well, Tyler Thomas doesn't go to the rim very often. And he said in the offseason he wanted to change that. He wanted to get stronger and show everyone, hey, you can get to the basket too. Alaco inside. Offensive foul. Jaquan Carlos draws the charge. Alaco picks up his first, and it's a one-point game as we head to our first break. Great start here from Long Island. The Prime leading 8-7 over Princeton. It's mid-major basketball at its best. Hi, I'm Chris, and I'm here to talk about Island Federal. Often, but very cool as well. Yeah, a bit un unorthodox, but a uh, really cool scene here. Uh, with dropping down in here, uh, with dropping down from the ceiling. Definitely cool to celebrate Veterans Day. Dalen Davis checks in, the freshman, number 22 for Princeton. No other changes on the floor from the starting five. And as a turnover thrown away to the Tigers' hands. Well, Hofstra on Monday took on St. Joe's of Long Island. Talking to assistant coach Colin Curtin, he said, that was the one game we said, all right, we know we should win that game. Division right. three school, it's one of those little warm-ups right before. How have you seen the difference from this team on Monday to now? Well, certainly certainly more intense now, but what I've liked is they're getting out and running in transition in similar ways. Of course, Princeton, uh, a, a much tougher test, but I think in the pace that they're playing with and the energy they're playing with, in particular, for, between these two games, is a good sign. Now, when I talked to Tom Parada, assistant coach, he was not happy with what he saw at the first half. Said it should be up by a lot more. <laughs> Little slow. It was an 11:30 game. Class at the court. Students came out from all over Long Island. Great atmosphere. And Will's ears are still ringing <laughs> as Caden Pierce takes it right to the rack. Pierce already up to six of the nine points. Well, Pierce is going to get opportunities both to drive and shoot today, trying to lock in on, on everyone else. And so Pierce so far has been up to the challenge. Thomas with some space now, and he misses the wide open triple. Uh, it's a tough break because Alaco hit the deck, but Thomas had a clean look for three. He might not have a whole lot of them today, but unable to convert on that one. Three-point shooting is going to be so big, especially defending the three-point ball. But taking it to the basket, it's not something they do very often as Fritz gets the block there, and Thomas has the ball. Excellent defense from Yako Fritz right there. He won a new challenge, had another graduate year, of course, to transfer for one more if he wanted it. <laughs> Decided to take it, stay here in New York. Really enjoyed his time during the first few months of being on Long Island. 
Here's Peters, excellent three-point shooter. And this will be a blocking foul against Dubar. Well, something interesting on the uh, on the defensive end uh, for Princeton is they are not going to let Tyler Thomas uh, get shots easily. He's going to look at head coach Speedy Claxton. He is going to be pressured. They're going to have a man up in his face and in his face. Not going to let jump shots come easy for Tyler Thomas. He might have to put the ball on the deck the way he did with that hesitation dunk uh, earlier in this first half. First two subs for Hofstra. It's German Plotnikov, who you expect to be the first off the bench. Real good role player and excellent defender, but Christian Tomasco, New Jersey kid out of Morristown, redshirt sophomore, and this was going to be a game for him because of his ability to defend the perimeter. Jacob Huggins also checks in the freshman for Princeton, wearing number 12. Missing a three from the wing is Dalen Davis. Washington, a step back triple, and it's short. So after a pretty good start in the first couple possessions, shooting's gotten a little cold here, Will. Yeah, Washington's a good shooter, but I think a pull-up three in transition probably could have worked for a better look there offensively, but Hofstra did defensively as they get another steal. It looked pretty sharp early on. Tomasco will get that steal. Carlos, crossover move into the paint. Here's Plotnikov, thought about the three, instead takes a two, and that misses as well. Again, good looks. That's the right move for Plotnikov. Defender trying to fly out and take away the three-point shot. So that's the right move, just, just didn't convert. Bride have not scored in the last three and a half minutes, and they've missed their last five buckets. But defensively, they've been right in this. Malaka has had a tough time getting anything going, and they're going to get Pierce for a travel. Yeah, defensively, Hofstra looks really locked in right now on the game plan. They're not getting beat by back cuts. Get a look at head coach Mitch Henderson for Princeton. Uh, in particular, on that last possession, Christian Tomasco does a nice job stepping up with a weak side, and Mitch Henderson's going to get a technical foul. And he's gone. You do not see that very often, especially early on in a game. Oh, my goodness. Mitch Henderson, 13th year head coach, has brought them to two NCAA tournaments. Of course, last year's Cinderella story, he is fired up. And we're not even eight minutes into this game, so he will be ejected with a double technical all after a travel call. Wow. I, I, that is something he's usually pretty even keeled. Uh, especially, you see, yeah, you know, a, a ref can call a technical foul, but usually a second technical foul has got to be something pretty bad. And... I don't know, I'm not exactly sure what was said, but that is a big storyline. Mitch Henderson gone, and now Tyler Thomas has an opportunity to put some points on the board for the Pride as he misses the first one. And Hopkins missed both free throws so far. But boy, oh boy, I mean, that's the last thing I think you really expected this early on in the basketball game with a coach who's been around the block too. I mean, this is a guy who has a relationship with a lot of people so highly touted. Mitch Henderson has built an excellent culture at Princeton. And Princeton guy and now works his way as associate head coach. He'll be doing the head coaching duties for this game. Very highly touted, but yes. still, this is a wild story early on. This is, it's, a, it's a crazy story. And uh, it's, Henderson was arguing the call. You could see the technical foul. Kept going a little bit more. And it was a really quick second technical foul from the official. So, I mean, that'll get Brent McConnell as well. So McConnell's going to take over. He's a guy, a guy that knows this system well, though. So you would think Princeton wouldn't, wouldn't miss a beat, but it's a big storyline. Uh, he's been taking that leading role for this Tiger coaching staff for a number of years. So, and when you have a well-oiled machine like Princeton does, it shouldn't be too much of an issue. You just kind of carry it over. But Henderson is done for the day. 11-9 is the score. Both teams have garnered leads. As Kijan Robinson out of Florida, the freshman, 11 points on Monday, wearing number zero. Comes on. Dubar, NBA range three, but that got denied by Pierce. Plotnikov is there to put it in. Well, the shot got tipped from D. Stone Dubar, but alertly, German Plotnikov picks up the ball. I don't think any of the other Princeton guys down low saw that the ball was tipped. So an easy bucket for Plotnikov. Lee inside to Pierce. No basket. It'll be a traveling violation. 
And maybe you should have mentioned traveling violation with Princeton. That's how it happened before. <laughs> Well, I mean, Splatnikov fortunately comes up with the t with the block shot and finishes inside. I will say, Princeton with no points over the last three and a half minutes, you never talk about Princeton and say sloppy, but honestly, that, that is exactly what they've been so far with six turnovers so far in this first half. That is very un-Princeton-like. This team controls the ball really well. Catch and shoot for Thomas. Three-pointer goes in the prime lead, 16-9. What a shot by Tyler Thomas. He's going to have some difficult shots. He's got to make them count. Alaco does a good job trailing, but Thomas, too good of a shot maker. Led the team in scoring 12 games last year, averaging 16 and a half, and expect him to be the leading scorer for the majority of this season. As Plotnikov picks up number two, and that's big with 10-20 to go, but check out this smooth three. Yeah, Thomas, he can shoot on the move. That's one of his underrated strengths. He's not just a catch-and-shoot guy. He's able to shoot on the move, and he does just so, just that there. Now, a little chip on his shoulder after not being named to the first team all CAA last year. And he definitely had the accolades for it as Plotnikov nearly steals the ball. Laka there to keep it inside the half. Alaco. For three, it's good. That's why you do not let Matt Alaco have the ball in his hands too often. Oh, that was 29 seconds of great defense, and Alaco just rises up and nails a three that Princeton desperately needed. Brings it back to a four-point game. Carlos to Thomas on the wing with 13 on the clock. Fritz, skip pass. Plotnikov thinks about it, now takes it. Three-pointer is no good. Dubar had the ball in his hands, ripped away. Fritz is there. It's a held ball, and the possession will go to the Tigers. Well, on offense and defense right now, Hofstra is playing as Princeton will get the ball in the possession arrow. Hofstra is playing with max effort all the time. The max effort on the defensive end as well is uh, just, I think, a really strong start for them, even though both teams aren't shooting particularly well at the moment. Khalil Farmer. Checks into the game, his second collegiate appearance. Talked to him before, Will said he was pretty nervous before going out there Monday. He redshirted last year, then also got hurt, had surgery, but talking to him in the offseason said it really helped him kind of evaluate the game at a Division I level. The lock of misses a three pointer. And, and that's what helps so much sometimes with guys who do redshirt. You have yeah. that chance to really soak it all in. He's that kind of player who needed to be like a sponge. Especially because. It, 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 for sure because the transition between high school to college is just so immense and even the physicality and having just a year to practice is something that's going to help most guys develop 6-4 guard that they are pretty high on Thomas from the stripe clanks off the back iron and the rebound by Jack Scott the sophomore here's Lee to the cup goaltend on Dubar and that's how quick Xavier Lee can be. He is, a, he is a really good driver, a good slasher, and he's got a very quick first step. That time beats Jaquan Carlos to his left hand. A little in and out move. And goes inside. As, not sure if it would have went in, but Dubar pinning it off the glass after it already hit the backboard for the goaltend. So nice response for Princeton, but uh, trying to see if Hofstra can get it going on the offensive end. Just one of seven from three so far. They were really high on Xavier Lee. One of eight guys who appeared in the NCAA tournament last year. They really only had seven that played in that Sweet 16 run. But Lee put on a lot of size. He was actually invited for Team Canada and the FIBA World Championships. Got a lot of experience there. Played very well. And that kind of what propelled him to taking on this role as the team's main ball handler. Two-point game. It's about eight minutes to go here in the first half, and it has been an exciting one. Lee for three. It's good. The Tigers take the lead back. It's 17-16. Khalil Farmer has got to show harder when, when Lee's got the ball on the perimeter. He's a really good shooter, and that time makes him pay, and Princeton back in front. Here's something off ball. And they're going to get Lee on a hold. So that will be his first and the team's fourth. Back and forth we go. The Tigers answering from downtown. 
They lead by one. seen from how the Tigers have handled him defensively. Well, Princeton's game plan against Thomas is pretty clearly, hey, he's going to take a lot of shots and there's nothing we can do about that, but what we can do is make sure he doesn't get any shots standing still. Everything is going to be on the move. We're going to trail him to make sure that he's that his feet are going to be moving when he takes shots, and he's, he can hit them. It's just a lot more difficult. There's Thomas with the left hand at the block. I'm not sure if they got a piece of it. Martini was there. Held ball stays with the pride. Caden Pierce, eight rebounds already here in this first half. I mean, we knew he was a rebounding machine from the get-go, but he has been unstoppable on the glass. He is a ball hawk. Uh, and pass a little behind Farmer, and now Princeton can run if they want. And Pierce... I mean, eight rebounds early on in this first half. He, he had 15 in his uh, in his first matchup as he lays it in there. I mean, Pierce is he could be up around in potentially asking a 20 point 20 <laughs> rebound. I mean, that's crazy to say in college it doesn't happen very often. He was wide open there on the left block, and they're going to get Farmer for the illegal oh, screen. Both teams with five team fouls. Hofstra shooting just 32% from the field, but one of seven from downtown. Meanwhile, Princeton up at 47%, four of 10 from beyond the perimeter. Well, their big number is the six turnovers, and that three-pointer goes. It's Pierce once again, I mean, he was so good when he was recruited in high school. You knew coming in he was going to be a real elite guy coming out of the Chicago area but he was part of that magical run to the Sweet 16 last year and showed why he's one of the best in the Ivy. Yeah, he's a, he's a huge part and still has a lot of room to grow too, just as a sophomore. Dubar gets the double team from one wing to the next, and it is JC who nails the three. Much needed three-pointer for the Pride, only their second. The possession started a little stagnant, but some good extra passes on the wing. Carlos has the shot, hot shooting hand so far. Malaco does not mind going to the rim. I haven't seen him do it a ton. Five-point lead for Princeton. And not a game you're going to see Hofstra post up a lot. They want to use their athleticism, and an offensive foul is drawn by Martini. Well, a good job by Martini drawing the charge because as soon as Fritz made the right decision to put the ball on the ground, but as soon as he put the ball down, he lowered his shoulder, and that's usually a warning sign to the ref that he is out of control and for a player control foul. So, Jaco Fritz going to get subbed out is trying to see if Tomasco can give them some more good minutes. Fritz with two now. Plotnikov also has two sitting on the bench. Next one will put Princeton in the bonus, and Tomasco returns to the floor. Parents in the audience, as they usually are. Local coming from the Garden State. Alaco, skip pass. Here's Martini from the corner, and it's too strong. Dubar to Carlos. A cutting. Bryce Washington gets it past Pierce. And that's what Bryce Washington does so well. He doesn't just stand on the perimeter. He's a great cutter and shows that there. And Car no better point guard than Jaquan Carlos to feed you when, and reward you when you make a good cut. And Bryce is familiar with this Tigers squad. He played at Penn for four years. Also in the Ivy. The air ball will bring it from the fans. And Hofstra with a possession here that could potentially tie the game. Locked by Lee. Well, he is so long for just a 6-3 frame. Mm -hmm. It seems to always be doing the right thing. Dubar. And denied by Pierce this time. Dubar trying to use his size at the rim as Carlos with a great feed to the cutting Bryce Washington. As Martini's going to get a break for, for Princeton. But uh, Hostra, the last few minutes, they've started to play a little bit better. Weathered the early star storm. And I think they're going to get a moving screen. Oh, no, it's a traveling violation. A little close with Tomasco as well, but another travel here. Already got called for 
A carry and a travel, you don't see it very often from Tyler Thomas. And that's a big part of that is because of the way Princeton is forcing Thomas to put the ball on the ground, which is something he doesn't do a whole lot of. They're going to force him to do it. Will he finish a couple times at the rim? Yeah, but Princeton is willing to play the percentages and try to make him a little bit more uncomfortable. Shoot on the move and look to drive, not just catch and shoot. Huggins and Davis, both on the floor, both freshmen. Alaco with four and a half to play in the first. Davis skips it to the wing. Some patience here from Peters and a rare miss on the triple, but the putback from Huggins will earn himself a trip to the stripe. Hofstra scrambles a little bit defensively. It puts them a bit out of position underneath. It's done a pretty good job on the glass so far, but that time Bryce Washington, a tough matchup against the reserve 6'8 big Jacob Huggins inside. Not able to get a body on him and He's able to get, go to the line for two, but not able to convert on the first one. The team has shot well at the line so far. One for three now for Princeton. Three of five for Hofstra, who have been one of the best free throw shooting teams over the last five seasons. And Huggins misses both. Who jumped out there, Will? Was D that D-Stone? Yep, D-Stone Dubar got his foot in there. Quite a bit early before he, before Huggins even released the ball. Let's see if that costs them a point. It doesn't. Uncharacteristic for the for both of these teams really at the free throw line. Hofter didn't shoot a lot of free throws in their first contest. They went one for three. Thomas far corner against Alaco. Thomas hop step in the lane with the left, tries to kiss it off the window. Misses and Huggins is there to clean up the board. He didn't finish, but that's the right take. That's the right move for Thomas. They're going to drop. He's just got to keep making the right read. Alaco from downtown, and it's well short. Well, some rare misses from both of these teams. November is kind of where everything uh, where everything starts to, to mix together a little bit at times. And I'll tell you, that Hofstra men's soccer team... Great squad trying to go for yet another CAA title tomorrow night. It'll be three peats for the Pride, ranked 17th in the land. Well, turnovers uncharacteristic of both of these groups. Eight for Hofstra, six for Princeton. A lot for Princeton came early. How do they clean this up, Will? Well, I think they got to do a better job with pressure. There uh, is Princeton sitting in a 1-3-1 here trying to create some turnovers as well. Just got to do a better job if your man doubles. Flash to the ball is Hofstra's going to turn the ball over here. As Princeton dropping into that 1-3-1 really threw Hofstra off out of the timeout. Now you can kind of see it on the floor with the passes. Didn't even get a shot off during those 30 seconds. Yeah, I mean, eight turnovers for the Pride and, and six for Princeton. Uh, uncharacteristic for both of these squads. It's, it's like we're going to have a one and one as well for, for Blake Peters. Yeah, Hofstra took a foul there late. I think it was Tomasco. So one and one for Blake Peters, who was three of six the other day. Yeah, it's going to be Tomasco. It'll, will be his second. Team's eighth. So your bigger guys, Fritz and Tomasco, both playing with two. I wonder I wonder if Speedy Claxon would ever try the li a lineup with D-Stone Dubar at the five to try and counteract Princeton also being small. I'm not sure if he'd do it, but it's a possibility. He's had to do it in the past because of injury. What an acrobatic move. By Jaquan Carlos. Oh, Jaquan Carlos has had a great offensive first half, up to nine points, leading the way in scoring. It's not something we say often. Jaquan Carlos leading Hofstra in scoring. And I think you'll see it a lot more this year mm -hmm. for a guy who was one of the elite passers in the CAA a season ago. And defenders, too. Yeah, like you said, well, uh, putting D Stone at the five, it's so interesting because Dubar kind of matches up. Normally, he's got a size advantage against who he would match up against. Much different against these Tigers. NBA Rain Street, Tyler Thomas ties it at 26. Well, that time, Princeton couldn't try and trail Thomas, so he got, got a clean look to walk into it and nails a much needed three. Great response for Hofstra out of the timeout. Peters turns it over to Carlos, so the Pride can take a lead. 
Looking for Tomasco down low. Back to Pierce. Nine turnovers for the Pride here in the first. Tomasco takes on Alaco. Alaco stops and beats Terry. It's that competitive nature they bring, the close experience, but very similar programs in terms of their history and, and how they like to recruit, build cultures around them. Mm -hmm. Carlos. Hard pass to Washington. It's good. Nothing but net for Bryce Washington in the prime lead by one. That's what Washington loves the corner three, and Jaquan Carlos does an excellent job of finding him from across the court, and Washington knocks it down. Minute 20 to play here in the first. Pierce with 11. And it's a blocking foul. It's the right idea that is on the other end. A great cross-court feed from Jaquan Carlos. Washington knocks it down. These teams just continuing to go back and forth and on the, as Washington picks up the foul. But it was close, might have had his foot in the restricted area. Hard to see from where we are. Uh, but nonetheless, more free throws for Princeton, who have taken six so far. Three, three of six from the line early on. Well, you need to step it up. You're really tall. You should be able to see everything. I know, I know. I'm the short one here. Gaden Pierce. The sophomore. Brother Alec plays for the Indianapolis Colts, wide receiver. Other brother Justin played three years at William & Mary and then one year at UNC under Roy Williams but didn't go to the NCAA tournament due to the COVID year. Dad Greg played football at Northwestern and Mom Stephanie played volleyball at Northwestern. So you think they're good athletes in that family? I, I would say so. Tea time is off. As Tyler Thomas tried it. One point lead for the Tigers. And shooting past the screen was Peters. Here is Carlos. Team's leading scorer in this half. Some contact there. Wanted a call. Doesn't get it. But there's still an 11 second differential between shot and game clock. So the Pride could have the ball to end the first half. Looking for Martini in the near corner. Hounded by two. Thomas on a locko. 10 on the shot clock. Doesn't take the screen. Sliding off is Martini. Here's Pierce, and it's a traveling violation. So timer is off in 14 and a half for the Pride. Yeah, Hofstra just, uh, just has had a phenomenal defensive half. And watch those guys battle it out. Tomorrow also on MSG Networks, Hofstra Volleyball taking on Stony Brook. Nice Long Island battle. Pride really need a win tomorrow volleyball to get themselves to the CAA beginning. And generally when this team is going, they are a well-oiled machine. They are, but Hofstra's done a good job being physical with them on the defensive end and getting them out of their rhythm. Uh, so far, Caden Pierce, 13 points, 10 rebounds for Princeton, but also five turnovers. So I think Hofstra is a mission accomplished so far on the defensive end, trying to make Caden Pierce beat them. Tigers in their black uniforms, trimmed with orange and white. Hofstra in their home whites, trimmed with blue. The starting five are the same from the beginning of the contest as Pierce misses the three-pointer. 13 points back in that first half. Carlos had nine in the first. Dubar had none. Very rare for a guy who was third leading scorer last year on the team. Dubar. Long two. It's good. There you go. Right on cue. Deastone Dubar facing up against Zach Martini. Had to give him a little bit of space because of the quickness advantage he has. He said, fine, I'll, t I'll take the little 14-footer. Knocks it down, puts Hofstra back in front. Lee working inside, now Martini. Alaco and Pierce. And Fritz playing with two personal fouls. Oh, the Hofstra's men in the front court tonight have two. Washington pulls in the rebound, and there's Lee again. Right place, right time, knows exactly what to do. Nearly jarred that loose. He is a very scrappy player and does a lot of little things well for this team. Thomas 
From the lane, here's Dubar again. Now a three. Off the mark. Lee straight away, three and one. Four point play upcoming. What a shot by Xavier and Lee. Carlos, I believe, didn't let him land. And Lee goes down and sells the call and knocks it, knocks it down. It's a big shot for Princeton. Let's get another look at it. I believe Carlos didn't let him land. No argument at all from Speedy Claxton. Xavier and Lee. But on a lot of size in the offseason, said he's always been trying to bulk up as much as he can. Only listed at 171, but he's a, a skinnier, lankier kid. And as we alluded to before, what he was able to do for Canada over the summer. Thomas misses the three-point response. When you play in that World Cup, you get that invite. Confidence starts to grow. And Mitch Henderson, their head coach, said kind of reminded him of what his old head coach said to him. Really believing in him. Knows he could be that guy. There's Pierce with the N1. Back-to-back N1 buckets by Princeton. Well, Caden Pierce is still aggressive, attacking the basket. His outside shot hasn't been great today, but he is such a good athlete and so physical that he drives inside. Jaco Fritz stepped up just a hair late, and I think it was the right call on the block. Had seven double-doubles last year. Already has one this season. As he hits the end one. It's the third foul on Jaco Fritz as well as we get another look. I think Fritz was just a hair late. And that's a that's a third foul. So Christian Tomasco back in for the pride. And the other guy who is in the front court for Hofstra is Silas Sunday. He's seven feet tall, the sophomore. Transfer from Iona, but not the kind of style of game for him in this one. Dubar in the lane, and the finger roll goes. Well, Dubar gets matched up against the big man, Zach Martini, and he takes his strength to him as well. The good, nice hook. Alaco denied by Dubar. Keystone feeling it here in the second half. Carlos throws on the brakes. Thomas, corner three on its way. It's off the mark. Hustling back on D as Pierce is there, and he misses a three. Martini with the carom. Now Lee puts it on the deck. Pass to Pierce, up and under. And boy, has he been pretty tonight. 18 points. And Pierce just knows where to be. Sees his teammate drive. He's going to cut. And the weak side help the drop on the opposite block just a little bit late, and Princeton makes him pay their lead up to six points. Ivy League Rookie of the Year. Dubar, along the baseline, Thomas now in the near corner with 10 on the timer. Beestone for three, well short. It's a difficult shot attempt there for Dubar. Now Dubar is not really a guy who will hit those contested three-pointers very often. Doesn't usually create off the dribble on the three. And has tons of tools. And it looks like they'll be bringing in a three-point shooter at the next whistle. That lead in the second half, and now a nine-point lead in the game, Will. What's been going on with the Tigers? Well, they've woke up big time out of the halftime locker room. And offensively, it's been the aggressiveness of Caden Pierce that has been the X factor uh, for, for Princeton today. I mean, Pierce has been aggressive, attacking the basket, and just opens up a whole new dimension with all those other skilled players in Lee, uh, Matt Alaco, even Martini as well, and Blake Peters. They have so much scoring that they can go to. Griffin Baruch right off the bench and knocks down a three. That's what he does best, shoot three-pointers. And Griff has the pride back on the board. I love putting Griffin Baruch in the game. They needed a spark. Could the three-point shooting of Baruch provide that for this Hofstra pride team? Baruch last year, they were hoping if he would make a big jump, get himself into the rotation more often as Martini grabs it right back. But this year, he came in, got a little bigger and stronger. His shot got a little better. His ball handling got better. And here he's looking for a spot-up triple again from the left wing. But it's Washington from the right. Back-to-back -back triples for Hofstra. Well, two of their important wing role players in Washington and Baruch coming up big. They're going to need them to make up this deficit. Locko, they've done a pretty nice job on him. Only six shot attempts. But he's hit three of those. Thomas hedged the screen. 
Drives inside, floats a pass out. Here's Lee. Crossover move against Baruch. Very athletic play and just came up short. A couple of Tigers were there trying to paw their way in. A great scramble defense that time on that possession from Hofstra. Carlos off the screen inside to Masco and misses with the left. And the Mac was ready to erupt on that one. Lee calls him off. Doesn't want this screen with 15 on the timer. He wants Baruch one on one. Lee now goes into the corner. Martini comes up short and ball goes out of bounds. And that will bring us to a break. This ground, I mean, you ask this Hofstra Pride coaching staff and special assistant to the head coach, Colin Curtin. Griffin Baruch is the most improved player on this team, so we'll see if he can provide some big minutes here. i got to talk to him about the headband, though. I think we need maybe a bedazzled one, the Hofstra logo. I could, I, could, I could get down with if that. If anybody could rock it, it could be Griff. I'll talk to him about it after. Yako Fritz inside. Fritz came out really strong in this game, but once he had a sit because of foul trouble, Will definitely made an impact. Yeah, he, he de it definitely took him out of his rhythm a little bit. For That was the first possession that Hofstra gets a post touch, and Princeton does not bring a double. Alaco gets doubled and hounded from behind. And a turnover. Offshore from left to right. Carlos, long two on its way, swirls in. That's a tough shot from Jaquan Carlos. Pull up from the right elbow, but he knocks it down. Carlos has made some big shots. He's into double figures. You know, Will, it's funny. So many people saying coming into this year, he's got to step up as a scorer. Well, he's a guy who was known for his scoring in high school. Yeah, yeah he was. Of course, the 90-point game uh, coming from Thomas Jefferson High School in Brooklyn, but we know it has it in him for sure. The leader on and off the floor for this team. Here's a three that's good from Jack Scott. Yeah, Scott uh, coming off the bench, hasn't played a ton today, but that's a really big three for Princeton to respond when Hofstra was starting to capture some momentum. Scott's mom, number two all-time Assist in uh, assist in women's basketball history at Princeton. Dad, head coach at Air Force, who just played here on the island today and got a victory against LIU. Washington. And just out of bounds. Nice take there. Yeah, and, and Baruch gets a hand up, but Jack Scott coming off the bench. Wasn't, wasn't a great shooter last year, just four of 18 in 18 games played, but makes him pay there. And that's a shot I think Hofstra will be willing to live with, but sometimes you just hit a good shot. Seven on the timer. Carlos. Washington with three. Needs to get this off. And that will be a shot clock violation. So misplay after the inbounds, even with the low shot clock there. Yeah, Hofstra had about nine seconds uh, coming Coming off that inbound, it just didn't seem like they had the urgency that you need to play with and you have nine seconds. And Princeton's so tough defensively. you got to give credit to them as well. The deficit is seven for Hofstra. Lee with the rock. Now Davis. The rookie passed off to Caden Pierce. Matchup against Fritz. The two-point guards will battle. Takes the screen. Lee inside. They get it to Pierce and rattles out. Second chance goes. Boy, he's a rebounding machine and shows it. Well, Pierce up to now 20 points and 12 rebounds. He's been undisputed Princeton MVP today. Off-ball foul, and this will go against Princeton. Just battling his way on the glass. Tigers lead by nine. Welcome to Vical Chevy of Valley Stream, your trusted family-owned dealership deeply rooted in our community. At Vical Chevy... Lots of time remaining for Speedy Claxton squad to come back in this one, Will, but what's it going to take for them to start to contain Pierce at this point? Well, I think that uh, in particular when it comes to Pierce, he's done, doing a great job. you got to be physical with him, but I, I don't think that they need to necessarily 
lock in on Pierce as much. He's hurt them a lot, but I think it'd be worse if they pro pay more attention to him and not their other shooters. I think Hofstra's where they really got to pick it up as the offensive end. Carlos to Baruch. Puts it on the floor. Skip pass. Washington gets denied on the three-point attempt. And they're going to say Lee stepped out when he had the ball, but heck of a defensive play from Xavier Lee. Yeah, Xavier Lee is a great athlete, um, and they've done a good job running him off the line. He knows that there's Oh, three he knows that there's three seconds on the shot clock. He's just going to sell out for the block. He does. And now we'll see the tough position here for Hofstra out of the dead corner. Thomas with two. Gets it off in time. And the ball gets stuck. So it's a held ball. Possession actually stays with Hofstra. Wow. Well, that's fortunate. <laughs> you don't see it get jammed very often. Of course, that is an automatic held ball. But now the Pride get 20 seconds on the clock. Down by nine. Carlos wasting no time, weaving inside, and just comes up short on the bunny. Yeah, great move by Carlos. That's what he should have done, but just that's kind of been the story of the Hofstra offense, just not getting some of the roles that they're accustomed to seeing them when they play here at the MAC. Lee, crossover. Has a wide open Scott who drink, excuse me, Pierce who drains it. Well, same old story for Caden Pierce, up to 23 points, three of eight from outside as well. He has been a monster today for Princeton. Pierce is one of only two returning starters from the NCAA tournament run. He started in all three games. Had six points, eight rebounds against Arizona in their big round of 64 upset, the 15-2. And then against Mizzou, 9-16. and 16. And then four points against Creighton in the Sweet 16. But boy, oh boy, did he have some impact. And he's going to be a core player to build around as Washington not able to hand, handle the inbound pass. Hofstra needs a run. They're starting to down 12 points. They're getting in some real danger here. If you're just joining us, Mitch Henderson got ejected, double technical, eight minutes into the game, which kind of shocked everyone. It was back and forth throughout the first half. It was a one-point lead for the Tigers at the halftime break. But it's really been all Princeton here in the second. Five on the timer. Pierce with a game-high 23. Gaden Pierce. Denied by Fritz, but it's also a shot clock violation. German Plotnikov playing with two personal fouls will return for Hofstra. Well, that time it was it was it seemed like the entire Hofstra offense was gathering around the rim to make sure Caden Pierce didn't score again. That time they did a good job. I still think defensively they're fine, but offensively they've got to get it going. And yeah, a lot of credit goes to Princeton on that end as well. Yeah, Pride haven't scored in the last three and a half minutes, and Tyler Thomas doesn't have a point in the second half, and still doesn't. That will be on the floor. Yeah, Jaco Fritz was held on the Fritz offensive the rebound, but they are making life really difficult for Tyler Thomas, who's 3 of 13 from the floor, but it hasn't... You could easily just say, oh, he, his shots aren't falling, he hasn't shot well, but these are difficult shots that Princeton is forcing him into taking, and, uh, and Hofstra hasn't been able to hit those shots and find other people to consistently hit jumpers either. Fritz in the lane, and that comes up short. Boy, the Pride have left now three or four buckets inside right there. And some excellent opportunities. They get lucky. Lee misses the triple the other way. Carlos to the rim, passes over to Dubar, who steps on the line. And the Pride are up to 13 turnovers in this game. I mean, really, over these last few years, you've, it's very rare that you see a Hofstra offensive drought like this. It's, I mean, Prince is doing a great job defensively, but Hofstra sloppy, 13 turnovers total, um, and haven't scored in the last four and a half minutes. A team that consistently has scored in the 70s, especially under Claxton and even before under the great Joe Mahalik. Deficit is 12, and looking for more was Pierce, but Davian Lee again, offensive rebounds. And we were talking to Colin Curtin 
special assistant to the head coach prior to this game. He said it perfect. This group, generally you want to play them early in the year. By the end of the year, they're a well-oiled machine. But mm -hmm. he said they looked ready from the get-go on Monday against Rutgers. They did. And they, they are playing like a well-oiled machine. It's almost, and this is going to sound really weird, Dan, but... This, the Princeton team that went to the Sweet 16 last year is almost like an atypical Princeton team in the way that they play because they have a guy in Tosana Womo who's so much action from the high post, attack in the basket, and Keyshawn Kelman, who they're traditional five men. This is more of a traditional Princeton team, uh, and they, they play They know their system. They know their role, and I mean, this is a dangerous, dangerous team. And I think there's a reason that... There's no other power conference teams on their schedule. This is a difficult assignment for anybody. Walma playing for the Motor City Crews in the G League, the affiliate of the Detroit Pistons. Nice defense there from Dubar against Alaco. Got to give credit where credit's due here as well. D Stone Dubar has done a great job on Matt Alaco, uh, but when a guy, when Caden Pierce has the game that that he has had. I mean, sometimes you just got to tip your cap because you shut down the stars that you know you had to shut down, but it's been the role players for Princeton and P Pierce that's really picked it up. And yeah, not the offensive performance you're used to seeing from Dubar, but defensively he's been excellent. Great pointer from Griffin Baruch, his second, and that gives some life back in the building. Big shot for Baruch, and they follow it up with a stop and a great pass on the short roll by Yako Fritz. Peters, and now Alaco, who they've held to just seven points. Peters from way downtown, contested. And brought in from Canisius, trying to recreate the two bigs, uh, Nelson Boachi, Adam, and Warren Williams that they had last season, where Fritz is more of an outside presence and a good passer. Fritz is a really good passer for a big man, uh, and trying to com com uh, make him compare with a with more of a bruising big and a low post big which is what they've done Fritz has done a nice job in the second half since coming back in Speedy Claxton said two years ago when he hit the portal took the job that he was just really trying to get the best players possible realized something had to change last year goes after guys that really formed the team understood their roles of the group and that's why they won the regular season in the CAA a year ago for sure it's not just the most talented team doesn't doesn't win conferences and win NCAA tournaments it's so much more uh, it's so much more complicated than that and a really good example is Princeton to, that plays that uh, role very well as Dubar is going to go to the line for two after the lead three on the other end and yeah, check out this triple from Lee a little crossover step back had the mixed match against Fritz up to 12 points for Xavier Lee. Back-to-back -back games in double figures. And don't be surprised when you look at the All-Ivy at the end of the year to see his name and some of these others. Absolutely, and he, he's a guy that really has had a massive step up in his role this year. Just had averaging 4.8 points per game last year on 38% shooting, but uh, with, with Ryan Langborg, now uh, with Ryan Langborg no longer... With Princeton, uh, he, Lee has had to step up into a big, into a starting point guard role immediately, and he's done a phenomenal job through these first two games. And well, that's what's also amazing about the Tigers squad is that, as you alluded to earlier on, the Ivy League does not allow players to play a graduate year there. Correct. So they had to lose some key pieces, like a Kelman who started and was part of this group, and like a Langborg who was second on the team in scoring and 12th in the Ivy. One's at Northwestern right now, the other one's at Florida Gulf Coast. So it's really remarkable what it could have been and what they still have done. Hofstra earns the possession after a solid defensive stand. Huggins will check in for the Tigers. And Baruch returns for the pride. Hofstra defensively has done a much better job over the last few minutes. Princeton just one of their last eight from the floor. A 13-0 run is really what opened it up for the Tigers here in the second half. Up by as much as 12. Carlos inside. Here's Fritz with the right hand. It goes back to a two-possession game. Great feed from Carlos and a stronger finish from Jaco Fritz. He finishes inside. Ostra, can they string together another stop? 
Princeton has done a nice job of responding after big buckets. Alaco from the stripe, and that is true. It's just the identity of this Princeton team. They can take a punch from the other team and just get ready to punch back. They did it a lot in their first matchup against Rutgers as well. They had an answer every single time, and the same, same exact recipe here at Hofstra. Dubar to the basket. Some contact and now gets the call. See, is this the act of shooting? It was. And that's what the Tigers are arguing, is that it's when he came down with it. But I think it should definitely be a, a foul going up because they're going to foul him just as he's going for the tip in. I think that's a clear shooting foul. Well, since the refs are getting, the officials are getting together, I don't think at all that this should be on the floor. Dubar's clearly jumping up to go for a tip. I think it's a pretty easy shooting foul call, and we'll see what they come out with. So no review, and Dubar will have two free throws to bring it back potentially to six. And Dan, Dubar, uh, Hofstra hasn't had a very good offensive second half. One guy who has and has been a lot more aggressive has been D-Stone Dubar, a big reason why Hofstra is still in this game right now. Carlos has just two points here in the second half, and Tyler Thomas has none. Dubar up to nine in the second half and game. And D-Stone is back in double figures. A really strong second half for D-Stone Dubar. Now down to six. Princeton's hit a big shot in these points so far in this game. Can Hofstra get a stop now? Pierce on Fritz. 23 already for Pierce in this game. To Lee as he weaves his way to the cup. Well, Hofstra's done a good job on those back cuts all game long, but in a big spot, Xavier Lee burns the Hofstra defense. 12 points for Lee, along with four helpers. Fritz to the basket. Great feed from Carlos. Fritz with the dunk, but continuing to trade possessions. The Hofstra offense is heating up. They need to try and get together a stop. Trading buckets isn't going to work at this point in the game. Lions then start to get into it with a defense chant. Pierce nearly lost it. Rook was trying to snag that away. Now Alaco to the basket and he takes it in. Baruch gambled for the steal, was able to reset, and Alaco, who's been quiet most of the night, gets a big drive and a bucket. Princeton just responds again and again. The guy nicknamed Mush. Anything but one. These stone to bar again underneath the hoop. But the pride is still hovering around six, Will. They are, and, and offensively, they've done a really nice job with the sets because they're trying to run them off the three-point line. So those looks underneath are going to be open. Got to get stops and keep going back to that. Ten on the timer. And there's a foul off the ball with nine. And it looks like it'll go against Jaquan Carlos. So do the Pride have a comeback in them? They're down six. 62-56. Don't go anywhere on MSG Networks and Flow Hoops. He's gotten, he's gotten some looks, some decent looks, just hasn't converted. Good ball movement, Peters. One dribble and a bucket. Yeah, Blake Peters is just a baller. In, in the biggest moment, just shot fake up in the air, one dribble, and puts up the three. Big shot after big shot for this Tigers team. Every time the Pride have started to come back into this, they just respond right away. That is a true team that's well built culture wise, everything, just everything they've been doing. Yeah, and I, I don't blame Baruch for flying out because Peters is such a good shooter, but uh, but he doesn't real run Peters off the line, so he just takes one dribble to the side and puts it up and in. 20 on the timer. Here's Thomas. Baruch thought about the triple with 10. Thomas 
to the basket and lays it in with the right hand. I think Hofstra defensively now is going to have to start mixing up their looks and run and jump, potentially down seven with 2.20 to play. You knew from the get-go this was going to be a jam-packed schedule. Speedy Claxton will play anyone, anywhere. Knows it really helps them for the CAA. That's what it's all about. Three seconds on the shot clock, and Alaco misses into the hands of Carlos. Thomas for three. No good. Dubar in traffic. He's fouled. An excellent, that's a good look for Tyler Thomas from three, but Dewstone Dubar has had a great second half, and there he is on the glass again, and will now go to the line for two. Two really big free throws coming up for Dubar who again. Uh, after a pretty after a scoreless first half mm -hmm. has been uh, 12 points in the second half 12 points six rebounds he's keeping them in it well the pros here for Hofstra is they have two fouls to give and two timeouts and they're also in the bonus with a buck 47 to go still long way to go but it helps right and now with your two fouls to give you can try and run you can try and run a trap and as well and if you end up getting beat just grab, just grab the offensive player and, you know, just deal with the side out. But down to five, they can get a stop. They're in business. Two possession game with a minute and 40 seconds to go. Blake Peters. Pierce looks up at the clock. Sees he still has 15 seconds to work with. Backs down Fritz. Pierce, count the bucket and the foul. Just a terrific move from Caden Pierce. He tried to, he was acting like he was gonna try and play bully ball with Yako Fritz. There, just putting a great move on and getting a little step back mid-range jumper. So uh, even if Hofstra comes out on, on, the, on the losing end of this, the performance of Dubar is definitely a bright spot. Well, they knew the schedule is gonna be tough. Princeton tonight, GW on the road, Gulf. Coast showcase down in Florida, and that can be a really, really tough one. Also be on MSG Networks, but then you're also seeing Iona. It's been a top team for a number of years. St. Louis, consistent power in the A-10. At Duke on the road. UNLV, St. John's at UBS Arena before starting conference play. This is a jam-packed non-conference as always. And it started here with a top team like the Princeton Tigers. Now with a minute 15, the Pride will look to force a turnover. Two on one the other way, and Alaco will just smartly call everyone off. See if they play this straight up or try and send a double. Baruch against Alaco with a minute to go. 12 on the shot clock. Long pass, Pierce with 26 already against Fritz with two denied by Fritz here comes Thomas the other way Tyler Thomas with 40 seconds to go looking inside for Dubar from the wing goes to Baruch far corner three it's off the mark excellent box out there by Lee taking away any chance for Dubar to get the rebounds oh. That's a great look from Dubar. That's a that's a very good possession for the Pride offensively. They got a, th a, a three from the corner. That's what they wanted, and a great shooter in Griffin Baruch, but just couldn't knock it down. And now with, that was their foul to give, so just full denial on the inbound for the Pride. Baruch, who hit both of his three-pointers, that he attempted, and it's gonna get an off-ball foul already, so it's gonna go against Carlos. And one and one upcoming for the Tigers. It's a tough break and on offense, that last possession. And Tom did a good job stopping Thomas and in his initial break. Get it to Dubar in the post. Lee does a good job, but Dubar makes a great pass. Baruch gets a good look, just and Baruch's giving them a real good spark in the second half. Just couldn't knock it down. Peters looking to make it a three possession game. And he does, hits the front end. And the Tiger faithful 
cheering in the section right behind their bench. Two for two. So down by eight. Pride need a miracle here. Carlos with 25. JC up and under with the right hand. No rebound by Pierce. They'll foul Alaco, and that will pretty much do it. So the Tigers make their way to Long Island. A gutsy performance from a team that was gutsy all last year as well. Their coach was ejected eight minutes in, Mitch Henderson. And that guy, Brett McConnell, held down the fort for the last 32 minutes or so. Yeah. And it has been really impressive. Yeah, I mean, it, it's a really impressive uh, performance and likely win for the Princeton Tigers. This, uh, we, when we talked to special assistant to the head coach, Colin Curtin, for Hofstra pregame, he just praised how tough this Princeton team is. And no matter what, it's not that Hofstra didn't have their moments in this game because they did. They had adversity. Their head coach got ejected early in the first half. It's just this Princeton team is so mentally tough. They can take any punch from anybody.